Hello. Welcome to the TA training series on how to properly and safely use a drill press. A drill press is a dedicated machine for making various size holes in your work pieces. Compared to the milling machines, which you've already used, a drill press is a quicker machine um, to use for producing holes. However, it produces holes that are less accurately located because a drill press, as you can see in front of me, lacks essential features found on the milling machine, such as a digital readout and axes of motion. The drill press always has a drill chuck loaded in its spindle, and it has a flat table on which we can position our work pieces or a vise in which we can clamp smaller work pieces to securely hold them. Before moving into the operation of the machine, we need to cover the rules for personal safety. As always, when working at our facility, you need to wear eye protection, proper pants, and proper footwear. In addition, whenever op you're operating a piece of powered equipment, like a drill press, you never want to wear gloves. In the case of a drill press, the risk is that you will have a drill clamped in the chuck, and as that drill is rotating, if your hand ever comes into contact with that drill, the glove will get caught on the rotating drill, causing your hand to get wrapped around the drill and pulled into the dangerous cutting zone on the machine. So don't ever take the risk of, using, of wearing gloves around the drill press or any powered equipment in any shop facility. Next, we'll talk about allowable materials for use cutting on the drill press. As you've learned in this class, most of the cutting tools you'll find in a shop environment are made of what material? High-speed steel, correct. Therefore, any materials that we try and drill on the drill press must be weaker than high-speed steel. The easy way to check this, if you're unsure, is to perform a file test. Now let's talk about clamping our work pieces when using the drill press. The number one rule when doing this is to never position the part on the table and try and hold it by hand while performing a drilling operation. The reason is the drills that we use will overcome the amount of resistance or resistance torque that our hands can apply pulling the part out of our hand and causing it to rotate at high speed causing a serration or laceration to our hand. So for that reason, we never hold on to work pieces when trying to machine them. Instead, we can use a vise, like you've learned to use on a milling machine. We always have one mounted to the table of the machine. As you can see, this vise has a nice set of parallels built into it. That's a nice design feature. So if this is my work piece, I simply open the vise jaws, insert my work piece, close the jaws, and I actuate the locking lever on top of the vise. And now the vise has a secure clamping on my workpiece. This particular vise has a clamp also that secures it to the table. So what I would do is load my drill, position my part where I want it, and then as the last step, I simply tighten the clamp handle, and that's going to hold my part in the vise and hold the vise to the table securely while I drill the hole so that I want to in my workpiece. The next method for holding parts, if the vise is not suitable, is to simply rotate the vise out of your way. And if you have a larger piece, you could clamp it directly to the table on the machine. We always have an array of clamps directly underneath the drill press table for this purpose. We can position the part and use the clamps, oh, a selection, an assortment of these clamps, two or three, to clamp our workpiece to the table. And we also have sacrificial boards that are used in order to protect the table from the possibility of hitting it with a drill bit. So quite often we'll take our, our workpiece, if it's large, we'll sandwich the sacrificial board in between, and then we'll use the clamps, as I spoke of, to secure the part to the table. Next, let's talk about loading the drills. As we learned with the lays and the mills, we're typically going to start with a center drill for the best locational accuracy possible. We grab the center drill, we open the keyless chuck, insert the drill, and clamp it as securely as possible by hand. Next, we move the workpiece underneath the drill, locating our target position where we wish to drill the hole. And once we find it, we can tighten the vise clamp as shown in the previous step. At this point, the part is clamped securely, we have the center drill loaded, and we're ready to commence with the actual drilling activity. 
I'm going to turn the machine on by pressing the black start button. I'm going to reference the speed chart on the side of the drill press. And in this case, it tells me for my center drill, my spindle speed should be approximately 1600 RPM. This drill press works just like the milling machines in that it tells me the machine must be running prior to making a speed adjustment. We have the machine running, therefore I can easily adjust this to the 1600 RPM, target speed, apply a little oil to my workpiece, bring my drill down to the right location, and commence with the drilling sequence. With the center drill, I'll perform a couple pecs, and that's all I need with this first tool. I'll retract the spindle, turn the machine off, and very importantly, wait for it to come to a complete stop before reaching in to remove the center drill from the spindle. Next, I'll select whatever drill size I want. We're going to adhere to the same rule of thumb we taught you on the mills and lathes, which is a quarter inch increment. So if I wanted to drill a 3 8 hole, I would start with a center drill, proceed with a quarter inch drill, and then finish with a 3 8 drill. The drills, if you recall, have, or the drill sets have three different sizes, lettered, numbered, and fractional drills. And in this case, I'm simply going to drill a quarter inch hole through our uh, demo piece. I'll open the drill chuck. I will load the quarter inch drill, putting my eyes underneath the chuck to make sure that it's centered in the chuck before tightening it. I'll look over at my speed chart and identify the speed for a quarter inch drill in aluminum workpiece. I'll turn the machine on, make the necessary speed adjustment, reapply oil, and continue with the drilling sequence. So I'll gently come down into contact, performing pecs to clear the chips. And once the drill exits the bottom of the workpiece, I'll stop before I push the drill too far, I feed the drill too far, causing it to collide with the bottom surface of the vise. Again, that's the purpose, that we take advantage of the built-in parallels to give us plenty of room to make sure that we respect the vise and never drill into it with the drills. Once finished, I'll reach up, stop the machine. I will never try and pull chips off the machine by hand. I will use a rag afterwards to do so, to protect my hands from the sharp chips. And finally, I can now remove my quarter inch drill and continue, or if I'm finished, I can then remove my part as well. As with any machine, once we are finished using it, the final step is proper cleanup. Our goal is to always leave the machine cleaner than we found it. In this case, we want to begin by taking the drill out of the spindle, by removing the workpiece from the vise, and next, by wiping the table off, wiping all the chips off the table and off the base of the machine. Finally, we'll use the brush and dustpan to sweep the table and the surrounding area on the floor, and then we will discard the debris in one of the trash cans found in the lab. It's worth mentioning at this point that when we're finished using drills, it's very important that we put them back in the right place. A student can waste a lot of time if they go into the drill box and grab a drill that somebody put it back in the wrong location. So please pay attention and do your best to put drills back where they belong. And if you're not sure, give them to a TA and they will assist you. Since the second drill press in our lab uses pulleys and a belt to adjust the speed, it's necessary to explain how to do this for the TAs teaching in the lab. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to remove the front belt guard for clarity. And the first step when changing a speed on the drill press is to unplug it. That ensures that we cannot accidentally turn the machine on while making the speed adjustment. Now you can visibly, you can clearly see the front and rear pulleys on the drill press. In this case, we simply push the motor plate away from the, the, the rest of the drill press, lower the tension lever, and we can pull the motor towards us, releasing the tension in the drive belt. By rotating the pulleys slowly so we don't pinch our fingers, we can adjust the location 
of the belt on the pulleys to speed up or slow down the spindle speed as desired. It's important that we keep the belt in a horizontal plane, so we're always going to position it in an equal number of, of grooves for one end of the pulley. In this case, I'm in the second groove, the bottom, on the spindle side, and I'm in the second groove from the bottom on the motor drive end. Once located properly, we, press the, we push the motor housing away from the drill press, retighten the tension lever, and I would reinstall the belt guard. At this point, we've made the speed adjustment and we can use it for the drilling process.